good to be home as you can tell um, I've really enjoyed my vacation with my grandparents I've enjoyed their company enjoyed all their time and energy and money that's been very gracious and blessed um, I can't thank them enough so thank you if you're watching this which I'm sure you will eventually but thank you thank you thank you and would I ever go back again obviously I would I don't know if I would do the two weeks Again, that was kind of, how do I say this? Um, it was a bit much, I think, for my, for both sides, probably. I think if we probably could do a week, that would probably be the significant amount of time we could spend together. Um, but we'll see. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know if it's going to be annual. Probably not because, <laughs> you know, got work to do. Got a life here that I have to continue doing so I don't know we'll see um, what the future holds but anyway I'm glad to be home glad to be back in a schedule um, work has been rough not gonna lie Monday I had off thank goodness I had my chiropractor appointment my brother came along with us we went to a Mexican restaurant which would probably be the last for a while I am restaurant out I am just kaput I'd rather eat at home for a while eating out a lot is just too much for me <clears throat> but I am nonetheless grateful that I'm still able to go out and eat and have the privileges I'm not saying I'm not grateful I just need a break <laughs> um, we also got a new washer and dryer that's the new thing our washer and dryer has been not acting great you know last I think it was two months ago three I don't know how long ago it was we had to get parts for our washer because it was off balance. That obviously is not staying. So the amount of money we're getting a guy to come out here and fix it and all the parts, we might as well get a whole new washer and dryer. So that's what we did. Found one that's significant. It came in yesterday. So yeah, I'm great happy and we're all grateful that we can wash our clothes again. I am so grateful that I was able to wash clothes at my grandparents because can you imagine how much loads of of laundry I would have to do if I didn't do it? Yeah. I had a few pizza bits and bobs still at home before I left and then I still had a few after and of course this week, but it's not as piled high for Zach and I, so and of course mom. She ironically was able to get her wash done when she came home. So sometime in between that time it afterwards it just kaput. So hopefully electricity bill will be down lower now with not running the water as much and the um keep running the washer as much and then it's just not significantly letting go of the water and then also the dryer has to work extra hard because our clothes are not significantly getting it all out so and of course the dryer was not exactly drying everything as well because probably it had too much dampness in the clothes that it damaged the wash or dryer probably so anyway so that was Monday and then Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday all work four day, three days in a row, four houses each, 12 houses all together in three days is insane, but we manage, and God's been gracious, we've been keeping, he's given his hand and protection, I've been praying that we were able to get through the week, first day was rough, getting back into things, and I was tired, and the heat is not helping, I don't know, 
well, it's basically summer, almost summer. I don't know when summer exactly starts, but <sighs> the heat outdoes both of us, neurologically speaking. It just wears us out. We often will faint if we're too hot. We sweat profusely. Mom's still wearing her boot occasionally. Um, she's able to have it off around the house, but working, it's a lot for her, so she had to wear it. Um, and we're all, and just with her having MS and, and me having seizures and all these things, it wears on us. It's, it, it's a lot, it's a lot to say the least. And so some of the houses we had to bu bump the heat, I was going to say bump the heat, bump the um, temperature down so it was cool enough for us. Only like one of our houses has it always on 60 some all year round for us. And everyone else we have to like, and they give us permission by the way to bump it down. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm just like, it's, it's really hot. So we had to do something for ourselves. Anyway, we survived. We're home. Um, yesterday was Scooter Pie's two year anniversary. He's been gone now. It's crazy. I kind of forgot to mention it to mom, but it's his, he's been gone for two years. So, oh, poor baby. Our, my phone prompts me all the time because once I turn my Wi-Fi on, it just kind of shows um, how much, like you Google it, keeps track of everything, how, when I took this picture and it shows me and reminds me, so that's how I'm to remind myself, or it's on my calendar as well. Battery's flashing, so let's change this bad boy and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, good clean fresh battery. I will be charging this other one soon. Um, yeah, so oh, I've been wanting so yeah, I survived. Scootles is you know, it was yesterday anyway. And today's a new day. Um, oh, I had gotten a our client yesterday gave me another birthday present. She gave also a um mom a graduation present which wasn't needful but she's very generous and she likes to give out gifts that's one of her love languages and so even though I, I was like you don't have to she already gave me those gnomes back in I think it was it February or March or something like that and yet she still wanted to give me something so she gave me a card I got a card we both got card we both got money as well which was very generous and then we also got a gift which were these boxes yeah I guess you can get online so this one's outside of mine it says happy birthday it's so cute um, it came with a tumbler which was <laughs> I can never say no to tumblers so it's so cute it's got it says surprise it's your birthday and it has a little cake thing in it and it's got all this it's got a candle it's got I love the colors of purple and blue which are some of my favorite colors um, but it's got like this little tab that goes out like that and it has the thing here hole. and also the straw can go in here so that's nice and it's got a little stopper which is always nice as well and it says sometimes you forget that you're awesome so this is your reminder so I love that it's so nice so nice so, and it came with a straw, a metal straw, and I've been wanting one of these, is straw cleaners, because I've we've got so many of these, and it's hard to clean a straw, so, unless you put through a dishwasher, which sometimes I will, and sometimes I'd rather clean it myself, and it came with this little card thingy, it says, happy birthday, so, just to go, like, so kind of bent up because the way it was placed inside the box. Um, I got some bath bombs, which I could always use for my feet since I don't like taking baths. And then, I can't even tell what they smell like. And then, a condo, which is so cute because it has like actual sprinkles in it. And I kid you not, it actually does white it looks like birthday cake and it actually has sprinkles in it <laughs> okay, put that down uh, that's what it says and it actually has real sprinkles in it 
I don't really think it smells like birthday cake. It smells like baby powder, in my opinion. But it's not a bad smell. It's I rather smell baby powder than like floral smells. So it actually has sprinkles in it. Interesting enough. It's all natural, hand poured soy candle. So that was very nice of her. Mom got like. She got a small tumbler. It was more like a coffee one. And it has something to stay fabulous or that remind yourself that you stay fabulous or something like that. Um, let's see. What else? She got like socks and bath salts and a bath bomb or two. And then something else. I think candle as well. So that was very generous of her and I actually liked everything I, I was like if I'm gonna get a gift set I'd rather be something I would actually use I do occasionally like candles I do use bath bombs I love tumblers you never can say no to that uh, so yeah everything has been very everyone's been very gracious and loving and kind and I am so grateful to have the people in my life so Oh, I want to show you that my friend's um, diamond painting. It is done. Hopefully you're seeing this and I'm not just like, okay, it is in the picture. But it's done. I'm so grateful. It looks so good. So that's been put. I think that's number 12. I it finished yet. <clears throat> so that is put back into the archive with the rest of them. I, get, I am kind of disappointed that I did not put the dates on this when I started when I finished. If I was smart enough, I would have. I usually do that as far as when I like finish a project or put the name on it or my well my initials and then also my um my initials and then the date. However I didn't do that. This one I did. I started my gnomes one Monday. Um, I think I significantly got some done. I mean, obviously I have a ways to go because this one's huge, but I started here and I kind of went down to here as well. So there's like, it kind of goes down into it, but I started some, the snow is kind of hard to see because it's, I guess you could see if it's glitters. I will say this one because it's like a name branded and it's the high end one. It is so easy to peel up and down. That is so easy compared to like a knockoff diamond painting. Not that I don't mind the knockoff ones. I just find it significantly different as far as like peeling the plastic cellophane. And I noticed the dots seem a little bit smaller in my opinion. It could be the company. It could just be, I don't know what it is, but they're just slightly smaller than the bigger ones or the cheap knockoff ones but yeah I've got a ways to go <laughs> this thing is huge it's the biggest one I've ever done and I'm gonna I wonder how long it's gonna take me so I started June 3rd and I have it written down and we'll see how long it takes me is it gonna take to the end of the year or is it going to take me a couple months I don't know it depends how motivated and less tired that I am basically most bit motivated I have to we'll see but anyway um yeah I've got a lot to do I've got some chores I gotta get done I haven't taken my medicine yet so I need to do that it's like probably after 10 o'clock yeah a little after 10 so I need to get my butt going um got laundry to do if mom's done I'm gonna start that yeah and we're going to be back to Bible time, guys. I am going to be back to Bible time. Sorry for those who are disappointed about Bible time. I will be getting back into that. And I'm going to get myself going as far as editing. I just had to get back into my routine um, of work. I wanted to rest when I got home. I was, you know, I had a lot of stuff to do. And then I know there was times at I could have done more editing at the on my grandparents but I just there were times where I was just tired so I gave myself rest and grace so 
if I don't edit, I will don't edit, I will eventually get to it. So, anyway, I'm gonna get get my get around to that as well. So, yeah, you'll see me later. Ooh, cutting my head off here. <laughs> hey guys, I'm in my corner, so you know what time it is. Bible time. So let's get started. I do apologize for those who. For not doing Bible time, and for those who actually enjoy Bible time, I enjoy Bible time. I think it's refreshing. I think it's good that we read the Bible together and we get something out of it. And for those who are not consistently into Bible time or reading the Bible, I think it's beneficiary for you guys that are watching my vlogs, that are actually listening to what the Word has to say. So. I do apologize. I don't know if all of you enjoy not having Bible time, the shorter vlogs. That's probably because I know Bible time takes up most of the vlogs sometimes, unless I ramble a lot, but the, that's beside the point. <clears throat> but guys, I'm back and we're going to get back into the Word because we need a new refreshing start with this each and every day. Alright, we're in numbers. Oh gosh, numbers, numbers, numbers. When will we get out of numbers? <laughs> I think we're in chapter 35, if I'm not mistaken. So, Numbers chapter 35 is titled, Towns for the Levites. While Israel was camped beside the Jordan on the plains of Moab, across from Jericho, the Lord said to Moses, Command the people of Israel to give the Levites from their, from their property certain towns to live in along along with the surrounding pasture lands. These towns will be for the Levites to live in, and the surrounding lands will provide pasture for their cattle, fox, and other livestock. The pasture land assigned to the Levites around these towns will extend 1,500 feet from the town walls in every direction. Measure off 3,000 feet outside the town walls in every direction, east, south, and west, and north, with the town of at the center. This area will serve as the larger pasture land for the towns. Six of the towns you give the Levites will be cities of refuge, while a person who has accidentally killed someone can flee for safety. In addition, give them 42 other towns. In all, 48 towns with the surrounding pasture land will be given to the Levites. These towns will, become, will come from the property of the people of Israel. The larger tribes will become more towns to the Levites. Excuse me. I'm trying to burp there. <laughs> Apologize. While the smaller tribes will get fewer, each tribe will give property in proportion to the size of its land. And here's a little sidebar called True Justice. At this time in Israel... Mm. At this time in Israel's history, if someone died because of violence, the murderer suspect was not automatically considered guilty, even if murder was assumed. The people were to, to be intolerant of the sin, yet impartial to the accused so that he or she could have a fa fair trial. The cities of refuge represented God's concern for justice in a culture that did not always protect the innocent. It is unjust both to overlook wrongdoing and to jump to conclusions about guilt. When someone is accused of wrongdoing, are you willing to stand up for justice, protect those not yet give proven guilty, and listen carefully to all sides of the story? Cities of Refuge The Lord said to Moses, Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, designate cities of refuge of which people can flee if they have killed someone accidentally. These cities will be placed of protection from a dead person's relatives who want to avenge the death. The slayer must not be put to death before being tried by the community. Designate six cities of refu <laughs> refuge for yourselves. Three on the east side of the Jordan River and three on the west side of the land of Canaan. These cities are for the protection of Israelites, foreigners living among you, and traveling merchants. Anyone who accidentally kills someone may flee there for safety. But if someone strikes and kills another person with a piece of iron, it is murder, and the murder must be executed. 
or if someone has a stone in his hand, strikes and kills another person, it is murder and the murderer must be put to death. Or if someone strikes and kills another person with a wooden object, it is murder and the murderer must be put to death. The victim's nearest relative is responsible for putting the murderer to death. That's a huge responsibility. And I, oh gosh, I would. I am so glad I don't live back then, because I would not been able to do that. Of course, women didn't really have as much say versus the men to do such things. But still, I would not want to do that. <clears throat> Killing someone just does not thrill me. Or even an animal. Animals, I don't like the idea of killing animals either. I have a, such a tender heart. I just would not feel comfortable with the idea of killing someone or an animal. It just doesn't seem right in my eyes. But anyway, I'm getting a little sidetracked here. When they meet, the Avenger must put the murderer to death. So if someone hates another person, pushes him, and throws a dangerous object on him and he dies, it is murder. Or where someone hates another person and hits him with a fist and he dies, it is murder. In such cases, the Avenger must be put the murderer to death when they meet. Another sidebar called a corrupting influence. According to God's law, murderers were, be, were to be executed because they corrupted the land. Murder and anger stem from the same root. While anger seems a le lesser sin, it can also lead to more sin. Unchecked bitterness and anger will ultimately destroy us. We need to deal with those strong emotions in an appropriate way before they get out of control. Yes and amen. Not always an easy task, but if you put it, if you allow yourself to pray through it, ask God to help you through it, he'll help you. And I find that to be very useful. But suppose someone pushes another person without having shown previous hostility or throws someone something that unintentionally hits another person or accidentally drops a huge stone on someone, though they were not enemies and the person dies. If this should happen, the community must follow these regulations in making a judgment between a slayer and the avenger. The victim's nearest relative, again, the community must protect the slayer from the avenger and must escort the slayer back to live in the city of refuge to which he fled. There must remain there he must remain until the death of the high priest who was anointed with the sacred oil. But if the slayer ever leaves the limits of the city of refuge and the avenger finds him outside the city and kills him, he will be will not be considered murder. The slayer should have stayed inside the city of refuge until the death of the high priest, but after the death of the high priest, the slayer may return to his own property. These are legal requirements for you to observe from generation to generation wherever you may live. All murders must be put to death, but only if evidence is presented by more than one witness. No one may be put to death on the testimony of only one witness. Also, you must never accept a ransom payment for the life of a judgment someone judged guilty of murder and subject to execution. Murderers must always be put to death. And never accept a ransom payment for someone who has fled to a city of refuge, allowing a slayer to return to his property before the death of the high priest. This will ensure that the land where you live will not be polluted for murder pollutes the land, and no sacrifice except the execution of the murderer <clears throat> excuse me, can purify the land from murder. From murder. You must not defile the land where you live, for I live there myself. I'm the Lord who lives among the people of Israel. Oh, we only have one more chapter of Numbers, and that's chapter 35. The next one's going to be short, so. Alright. So now we're going to do devotion time, which is still in Jeremiah. Jeremiah. I open it right to it. Ooh, I'm good. Or should I say God's good? <laughs> uh, let's see. Chapter 10. Verses 11 through 16. Okay. 
Say to those, say this to those who worship other gods. Oh, by the way, it's called the stuff of idols. Your so-called gods who do not make the heavens and the earth will vanish from the earth and from under the heavens. But God made the earth by his power, and he preserves it by wisdom. With his own understanding, he stretched out the heavens. When he speaks in the thunder, the heavens roar with rain. He causes the clouds to rise above, rise over the earth. He sends the lightning with the rain, and he releases the wind from his storehouses. The whole human race is foolish and has no knowledge. The craftsmen are disgraced by the idols they make, for they carefully shape works are a fraud. These idols have no breath or power. Idols are worthless. They are ridiculous lies. On the day of reckoning, they will be all destroyed. But the God of Israel is no idol. He is the creator of everything that exists, including Israel, his own special possession, the Lord of heaven's armies, and his name. Somewhere along the way in Israel's history, the strangest thing happened. The Israelites who had personally witnessed God's saying power through colossal miracles think the ten plagues dividing the Red Sea, food from sky every day on the nation of people, military victory over powerful enemies lost sight of God and began to worship lifeless statues. Tell them this, these gods who do not make the heavens and earth will perish from the earth and from under the heavens. God reminded his people that they were basically praying to lifeless forms of stone, metal, and rejecting the creator of the universe. As mind-boggling as it is, people make the same mistake today. <laughs> They can look around and see the wonders of creation still worship more mere stuff. They dedicate their lives to personal wealth, a big career, or here today, gone tomorrow, pleasures instead of to, of to God. Are you making the same mistake? Sure, you might believe in God, but is, it, but is more of your life focused on stuff than on Him? Don't let anything distract you from a powerful relationship with your Creator and make you miss out on a wonderful plan you heavenly father has for you what are some life issues that are distracting you from your relationship with god oh gosh <laughs> so i've had a lot of stuff in my life distract me um my possessions my social media um my phone any of my devices um Anything and everything can be distracting in our lives, but that's just kind of some of the things. TV distracted me a lot. Um, if I don't focus merely on God instead of fo I'm always clouded by everything around me, that really is an issue. And I have uh, had to ask God to forgive me and to solely focus on Him and Him alone. And I'm constantly doing that. That's a daily thing that I constantly have to do. I am... <laughs> can't profess that I'm perfect. I still mess up. Even as a Christian, I am still constantly messing up because I still have sin in my life. I'm human. We still have that desire to constantly do bad things and do things that are sinful. And yet God's like, hey, I'm over here. You need to be focusing on me. That's the main objective. And so I'm like, yes, Lord, I hear you. I see you. And please forgive me and help me to solely focus on him. So that's a constant daily thing that I constantly have to do. What steps can you take to refocus on God? Obviously, just set them, pray it through, ask God to help you, read the word, get deep down into it and ask God to just give you that focus, to just narrow minded on him. And so that was my best um, advice for anyone. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog as I am back at home. I am, they're not going to be as exciting, but you know, that's okay. Life is life and you know, you're here and you're seeing my life and this is the, my life. So hope you guys enjoyed. As always, stay positive. I love you guys. Keep on smiling. I love you guys. Jesus loves you and you'll see me next time. Which won't be until next week because I'm down back to one vlog a week. So stay tuned.